Hey guys, it's me, Hazel, and this is my YouTube channel where I bring you hostels around the world. Today we're going back, yep, back to Shinjuku. Last time I took you to the heart of Kabukucho, the late night entertainment district, but even I understand that's not for everybody. So for those of you who want to stay in a more calm, relaxing area, I suggest Unplan. It's a bit off to the side, not really located in a high density city area, kind of tucked away in a neighborhood, but it's still in walking distance to the sights and sounds of Shinjuku. You're also still located next to convenience stores and grocery stores. To get here, it's pretty simple. You're gonna take the subway to Shinjuku Shenchome station. It's a side station of the larger Shinjuku one. So make sure and pay attention that you get off on the right stop. I would then look for exit C7. Once out and on the street, you're gonna walk against the traffic flow and to the family mart on this corner. There are a few ways you can go from here. You can turn right at the family mart. I would continue straight until the next road where you see a Lawson's and then turn right. Continue down straight and unplanned should be down quite a few blocks on your right. Check-in is super duper easy. You basically just sign yourself in with their tablet system. The workers are there if you need them, but it's pretty much an automated system. They will give you your key cards though and kind of a guide of the facilities if you need them to. Security wise, honestly, it's a bit lax. It's not in the hustle bustle part of the city, so you probably won't need the extra security because you probably won't have any issues here. And I do feel like Japan is one of the safer places to travel, but the only thing that might be risky is like a female solo traveler. But that kind of security is something that we actually need to talk about. So there should be a video up here in the corner when that video is up. But this place still has plenty of security measures, like the door locks when you go to the actual rooms. I really like that. But to carry on, I would like to state that I didn't get a dorm for this location. And I honestly kind of regret it. I feel like it's important for me to review a place based on the shared experience, right? If you could click that little subscribe button and like this video, it would really help me on the future so I can work alongside the hostels and bring you guys way better videos. But back to the video. Like most of Japan, the layout is divided by floors. On the first floor, you'll find all the common spaces like the common room, the lobby, kitchen, and laundry. There's also a restroom. And moving up to level two and three, you'll find the mixed dormitories. Women's only is on level four, and level five is for the larger private rooms. Finally, on the sixth floor, you have the terrace. So this is our bedroom. There's a small nightstand on the side of the bed with a phone charger. And then there's the air con, a clothing rack, lighting, wall art. There isn't a lot of floor space, but it's enough to put your shoes and there's also a lot of natural light in the day. Scanning back towards the door, you'll find the light and this little door is actually the toilet. They have extra toilet paper on the shelf in the back and it has the Japanese toilet controls here on the side. And the light and fan switches are over here on the side of the door. It's also a pretty solid room, so if you're not at that comfort level with the person you're sharing the room with, I find it unlikely that they're going to be able to hear any sounds or anything, if you catch my drift. If you're looking for the shower, it's right around the corner. I love that they have the toilet, vanity, and shower like separately, so you don't have to try and use the sink while someone else is showering or pooping. It's not much, but you'll find a nice shower on the right it's actually a lot larger than the average Japanese shower. You do have the typical hot cold knobs as well as the one in the middle that controls the amount of water flow. The cord goes all the way up to the spout and you also have the option of handheld. But there's also two separate plastic holding options, one above the head and one below. This is found in a lot of showers here in case you don't want to wash your hair that day and it's very convenient. There is a nice bright light and shampoo, soap, and conditioner. Over to the side you have the vanity with tissues, cups, hand soaps, and towels underneath. They even have room for storage and slippers. Going back around, here's the room from this angle. I really like how the headboard glows. Taking a further look, you'll notice the aircon remote and a phone that actually controls your room. 
and they even leave you pajamas, which is an interesting touch. At the foot of the bed, they have a small clothing rack and room for our luggage. And if you're not into the sunlight, they have white colored blackout curtains. You do actually have a balcony, and while it's not some beautiful view, it's still Tokyo. And if you're lucky like me, you'll get to experience a lover's quarrel at like 2 a.m. Man, I gotta say this hostel is the weirdest. But the people that live or check into this one, they're just fucking characters. Oh god, the door's still broken. Last night, some Japanese woman beat the ever-living crap out of her uh, boyfriend and broke that front door. Tonight, we got this cute couple. So while the room is on the small side, I still think it's worth it. They do cover everything you need. And while there's some like vents and piping giving like this weird industrial look, they still try to decorate. So it's... It's kind of cute. It's an interesting vibe. If you look closely, you'll see all these hidden quotes all over the place. Going back down to the common area, you'll find the main lobby room, which is bright and colorful with all types of seating. You'll find this nice desk with information, maps, attraction of hamlets, and water. But over to the right, you'll find the common area that also includes the kitchen. It's a decent size with a few sofas, and there's even a table for eating. And over in the corner, you can find books on Japan and the Japanese language. If you're feeling social, they have a few games in the corner as well. I always feel like it's a good idea to have seating in the kitchen area. That way, if you come with like a group, you can still chat together while you cook. The kitchen is really nice too. On the bar side, it has some individual electric burners. Below that is the freezer and to the left is the fridge with a marker so you can write your name on your food. Up top, there's a toaster oven and some condiments and two hot kettles. On the other side, they also have a microwave, dishes, knives, and spatulas. They do ask you to wash your own dishes and up here is where you get the towels to dry them off and place them back where they go. Under here, you'll find some random cleaning supplies and the actual cookware. And lastly, you'll find saran wrap, scissors, and cutlery in this drawer. Since I didn't stay in the dorms, I can't show you those unfortunately, but here's a few pictures of the options they have available. And these are the photos of the shared rooms that they have. There are two options, the one that I got, but this other one looks really nice too. Since I couldn't be allowed on that floor, I can't show you the shared bathrooms, but I can show you the ones downstairs. You'll find them right past the kitchen in the back of the lobby area. This is also where you'll find the laundry. It's pretty easy to operate. The dryers are on top and take 100 yen coins and the washers on the bottom and take 300 for a load. It's going to really depend on the size to figure out the cost. They even have a shower room down here, which pretty much resembles the one upstairs, only it has a small dressing room. And last but not least, the upstairs terrace. Once you exit the elevator, you'll see these doors go out. Though I will admit, through all of the love that I have for Tokyo, I wish there was a bit more greenery. And it's times like this that you kind of miss having any type of view other than concrete. But at the end of the day, it's such a beautiful city, so it's still nice to have a patio outside to enjoy. I would have loved to show you the restaurant downstairs, but unfortunately I didn't go. The timing just never really worked out for me, but it does look like a really nice place. And I did keep hearing people say that the food was good and the environment was really lively. One night I even opened up like the glass lighting door in our room and it was nice to hear like the sounds of laughter and enjoyment like drifting in from the bar downstairs it was just really nice now we're here to talk about who this hostel is for unplan is a beautiful property and it's really not that far from all the crazy nightlife but it is in a much calmer part of the city and i think a lot of people will really enjoy that it has amazing like hangout areas and like group options because of how it's set up i think it's a great save for groups and couples that are like on a budget it's not so far that if you get bored you can't just go walk and find a bar and then still be able to get home without the help of like a taxi or any kind of transport and i don't know how the bunks really feel to sleep in 
but if there are anything like the bed I slept in, it was pretty decent. Also, if you don't plan on eating out as much, this place does have one of the better stocked kitchens that I've run into. I don't feel like it's a great vibe for anyone who's like a novice solo traveler, but anyone that doesn't mind like the solitude, they might like it. If you are a solo traveler looking to stay in this area, don't forget to check out some of my other hostels as I'm trying to make videos on every single one. Thanks again for watching guys. I have really been trying to put my brand together and make higher quality videos, but it's definitely a process. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.